gyertek lassan csonkigyűknek, és azt mondja, nincsen lehetőség arra, hogy We are quite behind schedule. This is why uh, I won't have the opportunity to talk about everything I was planning to talk about. Um, I rather would like to highlight some uh, problems. Um, uh, I'm, well, actually, when we are talking about uh, uh, child low issues, then, well, Uh, the, the title of this convention, and actually the Hungarian translation uh, is not too bad because it's the title of the convention is Convention on the Rights of the Child. Uh, well, the the rights of the child, just like Maria Herzog talked about this morning, uh, it's it's a good title. So. Uh, the the child is not the right itself, but it's, it's entitled to things, entitled to rights. Uh, so uh, one characteristic of this convention, the rights of the child, when it comes to um, uh, right to uh, religion, right to freedom of religion, the family is placed on a different level. The parents than uh, earlier human rights documents. Uh, Uh, also, all the international conventions on human rights and the U European Convention and the protocol, uh, they acknowledge uh, the right of the parents to uh, educate the children as they like. Uh, however, the uh, CRC, when it comes to the uh, child, to freedom of religion, well, the parent has the right to direct, so to say, to uh, the child in this process. So concerning uh, children's rights, I have to mention that I also have children, okay, I did not deliver them, I didn't, I didn't give birth to them. Um, uh, even though it's maybe not easier for a father than for a mother, but I don't want to uh, really start this kind of discussion, uh, uh, whose, whose job is, so to say, more difficult, the mothers or the fathers. So let's, uh, uh, it, it's a bit late. Uh, it's Friday, it's a bit late. So I don't really want to start this kind of discussion. Anyway, uh, so the question is, uh, there seem to be uh, Uh, contradiction. So when it comes to the CRC, then the parent on behalf of the child makes decisions concerning the um, uh, rights of religion, but uh, children also have rights on their own concerning how they want to exercise their rights to the freedom of religion. Um, Uh, lawyers always, uh, legal specialists always want to have a clear view about if there is a problem, who has the competence to make decisions. Well, parents have the competence to give names to their children, whether they want extra curriculum activities, but they want extra English classes or also like whatever. Uh, so uh, decisions in favor are made in favor of our children. Um, one, But one of these important questions is, at the very beginning, to make a decision concerning religion. To, uh, Hungarian, the Hungarian state, as opposed to earlier um, de decades, doesn't want to make a, a, a take a standpoint uh, in this respect. It has a 200 years history when there was clear regulation in mixed marriages. Uh, so that the children should have the same religion, a, a boy the same as the father, or a girl the same as the mother. So we know such regulations from the Hungarian legal history. However, um, today's government, today's state does not want to participate in the making of such decisions. Uh, also, if um, between the parents there are other kinds of disputes, now we know about uh, divorce uh, processes, litigations, and our Supreme Court is in accordance with the uh, European Court, so uh, the religion should not be taken into account when it comes to divorce. Uh, however, uh, consequences of this religious practice uh, should be also considered. So 
if this creates a kind of deviance in, in, the, in, in one of the parents, then this should be taken into consideration uh, when it comes uh, to who should have the supervision rights of the child. But the, the state does not want to be involved in such attitudes should the child attend religion classes or ethics classes. In such conflicts, the state uh, really doesn't want to take uh, a position. As far as I see uh, in the Hungarian jurisprudence, uh, uh, is not really full of such cases. Uh, a refusal of vaccination, this has already been dealt with today, and there is a special case is if this is being done uh, due to religious reasons. Uh, so the, the such there have been such cases. But concerning the right to uh, religion, so that we know from Strasbourg, from the use, uh, so the Islam uh, clothes and so on, so not attending school for religious reasons and so on. Uh, that's rather an issue for America than for, uh, uh, for Europe. So e the ECHR uh, was not really involved in this. So concerning case law, Maybe it's a simple approach, or it would be a simple approach to say that uh, concerning uh, the freedom religion, religion Strasbourg uh, uh, was really understanding uh, and really open, especially when it came to the rights of children. So there were. Uh, so, for example, there was a, a, a sexual intercourse with the child under the age of 16 was still a criminal case, even if it was in the framework of an Islamic marriage, or that for religious reasons a child should not attend school on Saturday and so on. Uh, so, in case of minors, the exemption, for example, from blood transfusion is not really recognized by, by states. So there are no kinds of laws in this respect. And another delicate domain, and in just parentheses, uh, when it comes to adoption, the state also makes actually a decision concerning religion because the adaptive parents will become the parents so and and uh, and if the, this adoptive parent has a certain kind of religion then this will be given uh, to to the child to adopt the child too but in case of the alternative protection uh, there are a row of questions so the uh, the, the parent or the institution uh, the, 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 the right to, the, uh, to free exercise of, of, of religion uh, comes to the forefront too, and, and the, the, ch the, the child's freedom of decision should be respected by the institution. Uh, if I look at legal texts, but I might not be right, However, in, ca in the case of biological parents and also in the case of adoptive parents, uh, for example, concerning participation in religious class, it's the decision of the parent whether the child should uh, attend that or not. In case of children in alternative care, the, uh, the, the, the will, the, 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 uh, the wish of the child has to be taken into account too. There are Although there are some provisions in respect to, so uh, the ethnical background and so on have to be taken into consideration. But uh, if formally, uh, it not necessarily means that somebody has to be uh, a member of a certain congregation, but it's just enough to have a certain kind of ethnic background and so on. Now, concerning uh, uh, the in relations within a family are a really delicate matter. And uh, 
religion is also a very uh, touchy issue. So, uh, the, and, 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 and the state really doesn't really want to intervene in these matters. So this is why the, the strength of, of, of religion and religious traditions uh, uh, are taken into account. However, when there are some extreme cases, for example, the gentle mutilation for religious reasons, the state can intervene, even though behind this such a decision of a parent there are religious reasons. But still, the, the main r rule is that the integrity of the family shall be protected, and and the, the, the state does not um, should not necessarily intervene into uh, such family conflicts. Those who have teenagers in the family, the, to them I do not have to explain what such conflicts uh, mean. So uh, these do not have to be taken into legal domains and the state does not really want to intervene. So uh, it is the natural right of parents uh, to uh, to really give over this, this knowledge, their own traditions to, to their children, um, and uh, and how how children should be involved. There is uh, in Germany, in Austria, Religionsmündigkeit, this kind of concept that uh, from the age of 14, children have the right to decide uh, uh, how they will want to attend uh, religion or ethnic classes, so, so to make such decisions. But we don't have this kind of uh, normative borders. So it's 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 really uh, it's up to a, uh, it's really a, a really difficult task for a parent to uh, want to get into a conflict with a child above the age of 14. It's not an easy issue. Uh, the child is a natural community and internal relations should be respected, and these are of primary importance when we are talking about the freedom of religion. And when we are talking about uh, human rights regulations, we always have to be really careful of uh, the, the, the peace of the society shall be safeguarded then not uh, extra conflicts evolve. Thank you for your attention. Please hold your presentation. Thank you very much. And I'm glad that the signs of tiredness show uh, in the public. And I would like to thank uh, everybody for all the participants, for everybody who still stayed. Thank you for the presence, for the interest, for the perseverance, and to the. And I would like to thank the organizers, um, to the uh, Ferenc Marley Institute of Comparative Law and its uh, its leader Istvan Szilágyi, uh, Janos Szilágyi, sorry, and Marta Benius, who was the very heart and soul of these two days. I believe uh, these these are tiring but it's very much worth it. And I believe they, they, they were able to touch upon each and every aspect. As for my subject, so the right of the child uh, to freedom of expression in family law litigations. I believe I'm an easy situation because yesterday I had an we had an exceptionally good panel discussion where we basically started warming up for this subject and we actually uh, dissected several elements, several components of this topic. And maybe it's the legal component that I would like to introduce. And I would like to start out by saying, and I will very much keep my 15 minutes, that uh, in 2018, when the new code of uh, civil procedure came into force, then uh, family, when defining family law litigations and when regulating family law litigations, a very important was, a very important aspect was the interest of the minor child, and few know, or uh, it is maybe not conscious 
that in terms of uh, parental custody, accord according to all litigations, these were not regulated separately. They were not um, considered to be uh, uh, litigations uh, concerning personal state. So, um, but now it is uh, provided for as a special case. It was very important that in term, when regulating family law uh, litigations of the Code of Similar Procedure, uh, then uh, the guidelines of the European Union should also be contained. These were present in the old Civil Code of uh, Civil Procedural Code as well. Uh, and I would like to highlight three things. One was enabling that the court of officially in the interest of the minor child can exclude public participation. This does not have to be requested. The court can do this uh, on its own, and it's very the competence uh, rules are very important, which also enable in family law litigations that uh, the court, in accordance with the residence or usual place of permanence of, of stay of the child, should be the competent one. And the third aspect, which is a complete novelty and which was regulated anew and this is still to be developed. This is uh, listening to hearing the minor as the interested party, as a stakeholder. Uh, in these uh, uh, family, uh, in these parental custody litigations, um, the child is usually not a party, not a, a participant. Otherwise, uh, its situation is a very special one. It's not a witness, it's not a party, not a participant, but it's an interested party that that uh, that is considered. This was a very important deficiency of old regulation, and now this has been remedied. This is a very important and very forward-looking uh, remedies, but let's concentrate now on strengthening the right of the child to freedom of expression. Uh, the new or irregular solution that exists in, in, in Hungary is that for the child to express its, uh, its uh, opinion and to involve the child or to listen to the child, all the half of these rules are uh, in the uh, Hungarian Civil Code and the, the other one, the other half in the Hungarian Code of, of Civil Procedure. And why is notification, for instance, in the Civil Code, the minister once asked, and indeed this division uh, between the two codes, material law and procedural law, um, these cannot be really supported logically. Um, however, for a decade, uh, long rule uh, in uh, litigation concerning parental custody, the child can request to be heard, or the court uh, can can uh, consider this to be justified on its own. And then, in these cases, the child has to be uh, heard. There is a new, there is a modification, and the bomb exploded, so to say, as I said yesterday, and not uh, not affecting uh, the. Uh, rules of child interrogation anyway that were regulated in the civil code by not affecting this at all. This uh, civil code regulation was modified by half a sentence by saying that the child has to be notified about the possibility of making a declaration, a statement. And this exploded like a bomb. This uh, addition was brought by Act uh, 62 slash 2021, uh, which uh, is about international legal collaboration. And if we want to provide a hint, then we might say that this addition is an international one, is, is of an international orientation. And uh, uh, this, uh, this act on parental responsibility regarding international legal collaboration reflects very well on the legal development uh, which uh, targets child-centered justice. What do I have in mind at such, an, uh, such a late hour? Uh, what has been said lots of times, the uh, CRC, art, Article 12, uh, which means that the child can express its opinion in each and every uh, issue uh, affecting uh, him or her. And uh, the uh, UN uh, 
con committee on on children rights and after 95 this has been also ratified as part of hungarian law because this uh, this has been widely acknowledged and accepted has interpreted in several uh, comments how to uh, understand the the child as uh, a child who is able to judge and um, why do we have to send the notification to the child that is only half a year old? The question arises. To anyone who deals with this question, well, they might have noticed that Article 12 is, is about child who is able to form his or her own view. And uh, such a child who can form his or her own view or who can judge is not the one and the same category but uh, what we implement is built on this and uh, very firmly these guidelines show and these general comments alike that there is no minimal age for create for the a child who is able to provide an opinion and uh, according to me the court uh, proceeds correctly if it sends the notification to each and every child. It, it causes a lesser problem if the half a year old child receives it, who indeed is unable to form his or her own opinion. Uh, but may, uh, the court makes a huge mistake if it doesn't notify the child who is able to, to form his or her own opinion. So these, this way the court avoids uh, mistakes. Um, the child is an active subject and notification is the prerequisite of participation. It is not enough that the child has the right to express his or her own opinion, but the child also needs to know that he or she has the right. So this, notif this obligation of notification is uh, the prerequisite of participation that we talk so much about. And what we, I also mentioned yesterday, nobody wishes to place a situation in a conflict of loyalty. Nobody wishes to traumatize the child. Simply, the child has the right. It's not the right to dispose of himself or herself, but the child and the, so the decision so he has can be part of the decision involving his or her own fate. And for a very long time, so we need to say this for a very long time, because in vain did Hungarian um, uh, law enforcement ha and uh, jurisdiction uh, one year to prepare for this. This was basically out of the blue that this obligation of notification affected everybody. But I believe that the position of the Commission on, on Children's Rights is indeed a very important guideline. The other thing that... Uh, also appeared in all kinds of different articles is that suddenly we accepted a union uh, guideline or resolution this is not what it's about this is not what happened but uh, indeed this gave a huge impetus this obli uh, the obligation of notification was hugely affected by uh, by eu uh, decree of uh, number 11 11 this is the Brussels 2B, this is the decree, uh, which uh, on the 1st of August 2022 came into force. And uh, this also names uh, the ch child's own right to his or her own uh, declaration. So the child has to be ensured a true and realistic uh, opportunity to express his or her own opinion. There was one case where this, uh, where the ECG expressed, this is this is Saraga case. So it becomes uh, realistic and uh, true by the child knowing about this uh, opportunity. Brussels to be this decree uh, also uh, names uh, one uh, possibility to revoke this option. So uh, the acknowledgement of a decision and the execution of a decision can be denied. It can be uh, denied both execution and acknowledgement if the decision was taken 
without the, the child who has the ability to judge having been given the possibility to declare his or her opinion. The question, uh, is there an exception? Yes, there are two exceptions. If, if it's of utmost urgency or if it affects only the goods, the wealth of the child. But the, in the Council, there was a recommendation when discussing this decree that uh, the agreement should also be in terms of uh, among the exceptions when the uh, the child does not the child's declaration is not needed and the child does not have to be uh, provided this opportunity but this exception was harshly but firmly refused so no member state approved of this um, uh, whatever uh, appeared in uh, in in practice is that the agreement uh, which uh, is of similar value as the sentence itself. Uh, the child has to be notified of this agreement as well. How does the notification of the child lo uh, look in practice? Lots of questions arise. Uh, currently, there are no unified notification forms that are sent uh, to the children, but I believe some well-targeted newspaper articles were needed so that this unification process can start and the the child children's rights cabinet can start its work and at the end of january this will be among the useful forms available with the involvement of a child psychologist because currently we have excellent practices and we might say terrible ones when children are threatened with with fines monetary fines uh, and they are called upon the coming into force of the decree 11-11 uh, and uh, the reasonable amount of time to end the procedure. As a procedural jurist, I'm very much interested. And in the, in the framework of the last session, the question also arose that uh, as uh, there is a preparatory section and a meritory uh, part of uh, of a hearing. When do we have to send this notification? This has also been touched upon today. If we send it right at the beginning, I don't know whether it was yesterday or today that someone mentioned it. Uh, so that, that the child is always listened listen to at, at the end that if we notify the child right at the beginning of the procedure because the child perceives time differently and uh, if he is to be listened uh, in eight months time or till 12 months time if he or she requests to i believe the judge has to send this notification by assuming that the child will indeed request his or her interrogation so the sending of the notification and the eventual interrogation of the child, well, there should not be too much time between these two. This is a very important aspect, and I believe that in order not to experience uh, this new regulation like out of blue and not to experience this as something bad because this is something utterly good, uh, it is unfortunate that uh, previously this was not part of public opinion. But indeed, we need a paradigm shift in order to accept this. And we need to acknowledge that uh, in these cases, the child is not the object, but the very subject of, of the litigation. whose opinion indeed matters. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, everybody. My name is Ivan Shimovic. I am an associate professor at the Chair of Family Law and the Law Faculty Zagreb from Croatia. I had a presentation. I hope it will be uploaded. Thank you very much. So the topic of my presentation is the right of the child to be heard in Croatian family law system and judicial practice. Uh, I will start off my presentation with the overview of the main national legal sources that regulate the child's right to be heard in Croatia. So this is the Constitution of the Republic of Croatia and the Croatian Family Act, uh, in short, CFA. 
so the child's right to be heard uh, has a very important position within the Croatian Family Act and is prescribed both by substantial norms and by procedural norms. Uh, Article 86 of the Croatian Family Act prescribes how this right should be uh, executed or exercised in everyday life, how this right should be exercised in all judicial and administrative proceedings, and it also prescribes who is first and foremost uh, uh, obliged to respect that child's right and to help the child uh, express his or her own views within everyday life situations or within all judicial or administrative proceedings. I will focus uh, on paragraph 2 of the Article 86 of the Croatian Family Act because uh, this is the focal point uh, of, the, of the presentation. So it is prescribed that in all proceedings, meaning all judicial and, administra and administrative proceedings, uh, involving decisions on the child's rights and interests, the child is entitled to, first and foremost, be informed in an appropriate way of the relevant circumstances of the case, then to obtain advice, and only then to express his or her own views uh, and to be informed of possible consequences of those views. The child's views shall be given due weight in accordance with uh, his or her age and maturity. Uh, this provision of the CFA is a confirmation that the Croatian legislator has implemented a constitutional requirement according to which everyone's duty is to protect children and infirm persons. So the logic behind this standpoint of family law theory is if you haven't heard the child, if you haven't given the child the opportunity to express his wishes, his thoughts, his considerations, then you won't be able to protect this child because you won't be able to assess what his or her best interest is and how to protect this best interest. And this uh, family law concept has been accepted by the Croatian judicial practice. Uh, in the Croatian family law theory, it has been uh, emphasized for a long time uh, that there is a strong uh, connection between the right of the child to be informed and to be heard, as prescribed in Article 86, and the principle of primary protection of the best interest of the child, as prescribed in Article 5 of the CFA. Uh, the same link or the same connection exists between Articles 12 and Article uh, 3 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, as is emphasized uh, by the Committee on the Rights of the Child in the General Comment Number 12. So uh, it is prescribed that uh, there is no tension between Articles 3 and 12 on the complementary role of the two general print principles. In fact, there can be no correct application of Article 3 if the components of Article 12 are not respected and I would say vice versa. And uh, relying on this standpoint on, of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, the Croatian Family Law Theory and then uh, afterwards the Croatian judicial practice formed a standpoint that uh, correct, assess, uh, uh, correct application of the right of the child to be heard, to be informed and then heard, is a precondition for the correct assessment of the best interest of the child and the correct uh, protection of the best interest of the child. So to speak, uh, our Constitutional Court uh, uh, of Republic of Croatia, in one judgment, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it was stated that it, uh, the right application of the right of the child to be heard is like a hallway leading to correct assessment and correct uh, protection of the best interest of the child. Another legal standpoint or a legal benchmark uh, that has been emphasized in international legal sources is that uh, expressing a view or expressing an opinion is the right of the child and not the duty of the child or the obligation of the child. So this has been emphasized uh, in the general comment number 12. This has been emphasized in uh, the guidelines uh, on child-friendly justice. 
and uh, most recently uh, in Brussels 2 ter regulation where it has been uh, in recital 30, uh, 39 it has been written that while remaining a right of the child hearing the child cannot constitute an absolute obligation but must be assessed taking into account the best interest of the child so uh, these legal standpoints this legal standpoint has been implemented and explicitly pre prescribed within procedural norms of uh, the Croatian Family Act, and paragraph 1 of Article 360 prescribes that in proceedings concerning personal and propriety rights and interests of the child, the court will enable the child to express his or her opinion unless the child declines. So this confirms that this is, in fact, a right of the child, not the obligation or the duty of, of the child. Another provision that I, found, uh, I find very interesting and very important is that the competent court is not under an obligation to obtain a child's opinion in cases where there are particularly important reasons which shall be explained in the decisions. So these particularly important reasons, as the professor already uh, mentioned, are if the child is exposed to a high amount of stress, if the child is exposed to manipulation, by one of the parents, by both parents, by grandparents, by foster parents, or any third person that has influence on the child. And uh, these are situations where the competent court is not under an obligation to obtain a child's opinion. So these legal standpoints have been accepted and implemented in creation judicial practice uh, as well. So, in one judgment, uh, or our constitutional court uh, uh, concluded that it is true that the Convention on the Rights of the Child stipulates that the child has the right to freely express his or her wish, uh, views, but during the proceeding it was unequivocally established that in uh, this particular case the child cannot freely express his opinion because the mother constantly exerts a negative influence on the child. So, the negative influence was a reason why the, ch uh, the competent court was not uh, obligated to obtain a child's opinion because the competent court established that it was not authentic. Uh, the same, uh, very similar, a very similar case uh, and very similar uh, uh, conclusion was made by the county court in Dubrovnik where it was established that uh, the conflict of interest is the reason why the competent court did not obtain the, uh, the opinion of the child. Uh, I hope you don't think that I copied this from the professor, but I thought this, uh, this uh, judicial creation, judicial practice was very important because it is in line with uh, the standpoint of the Court of Justice of the European Union in a case that Professor earlier mentioned. Uh, and the Court of Justice concluded that uh, while remaining a right of the child, hearing the child cannot constitute an absolute obligation, but must be assessed having regard to what is required in the best interest of the child in each individual case, of course referring to Article 24 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU. Uh, moving on, uh, so we have established that in Croatian family law system the child has the right uh, to express his or her own opinion but it also has a right to express an opinion in an appropriate place. So uh, this is, I find this to be very important because it's a precondition. This precondition needs to be met in order for the court to obtain an authentic opinion of the child. So opinion of the child that is deprived of any external influence by third persons. Uh, what, uh, what is an appropriate place in Croatian family law system? Uh, the answer to that question is given by uh, a bylaw, bylaw on methods on communication with the child, where it is defined that an appropriate place is a premises other than a courtroom, a premises that is equipped and adapted for working with the child and where the child is ensured privacy and safety. So in, in practice, in Croatia, uh, this appropriate place is often a home of the child. So children are often heard 
uh, within their homes, but uh, a possible problem could be that this is also a home of one of the parents, of grandparents, of foster parents, of, uh, or an institution where the child lives. Uh, in Croatian practice, uh, the child is often heard within a special premises of the social welfare center, because the social welfare center is often used by the court as an auxiliary court body, uh, because it has uh, uh, an expert team that uh, consists of a lawyer, social worker, and a psychologist. So uh, the court often use, uh, uses a uh, uh, social welfare center, and social welfare centers have special premises that are equipped for uh, working with the child. Uh, premises of the court, the, uh, well, in Croatia, uh, only one or two court have, courts municipal courts have special premises, and that is a problem that I will address uh, in my conclusion. And uh, the point is, wherever uh, the child is being heard, it has to be uh, without the presence of parents, because we, ha we want to obtain uh, uh, an authentic opinion of the child. Uh, there is uh, one problem that I wanted to, uh, em that I wanted to, to point out, Within, our, uh, within the provisions of the CFA, the Croatian Family Act. Uh, so uh, the, the child has the right to express his or her opinion in an appropriate place, but according to the general comment and the guidelines of child-friendly child justice, the child also has the right to choose uh, whether it will express uh, its opinion directly or, or through a legal representative. Uh, in Croatian uh, Family Act, this is not so, because if the child is younger than 14 years of age, uh, the child will be heard through a legal representative, and that is a special guardian and litem uh, or another professional person. And in practice, this is o o almost always a psychologist, if not psychologist, then a social worker. I'm sorry. Uh, this is why I wanted to emphasize the role of the special guardian ad litem in the context of the realization of the child's right to be heard in proceedings where the interest of the child conflict with the interest of the parents. So in these proceedings, uh, the, uh, the special guardian is appointed to the child and the child is being represented by a special guardian, not by the parents in this proceeding. And uh, there is uh, an obligation of the special guardian and litem to inform the child on the subject, evolution and possible outcome of the proceeding in an appropriate way and to assure that the child's right to express uh, his or her opinion is realized. So uh, this important role of the special guardian is, uh, is um, accentuated in one of the judgments uh, uh, of the European Court of Human Rights in a case C versus Croatia uh, in, from October 2020, where the court concluded that the combination of flawed representation and failure to duly present and hear the applicant's views and the applicant is a minor child uh, in the proceedings irremediably undermined the decision-making process in the instant case. So the court concluded, in fact, that uh, the proceedings that, would carry, that were carried out in front of the Croatian courts did not, uh, did not uh, meet the procedural requirements de deriving from Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, and the same conclusion uh, uh, can be found within the, uh, the jurisprudence of our uh, constitutional court. Uh, the, the conclusion would be uh, that uh, the provisions of the Croatian Family Act are and have been from 1998 in line with all the requirements deriving from international legal sources. And uh, for the most part, the right of the child to be informed and to be heard uh, uh, has been adequately protected by the Croatian Family Act. Uh, the problem that we see uh, uh, is not within the provisions but within uh, the exercise of those provisions in practice. Why? So uh, we belie I believe that uh, the problem is that we have no specialized family law courts that would, have, 
that would have integrated support services, auxiliary services. Uh, our Ministry of Justice says that we don't have enough resources. Uh, Ministry of Justice is uh, not very supportive toward judges and toward courts. I don't know uh, why this is so. Uh, only a few municipal courts have uh, uh, family law departments and have appropriate premises equipped for working with uh, children. I already mentioned that uh, courts often use uh, social welfare centers as auxiliary court bodies to hear the, ch uh, the children uh, that are parties to the proceedings and the social welfare centers are uh, undercapacitated and overburdened. Uh, and the problem is that we don't have enough special guardians at Leeton. We have that, uh, so we have 19 of them, and they cover the whole of Croatia. And annually, they have around 4,000 uh, 4, cases, and represent from five to 8,000 children. And uh, in uh, our ombudsman for children uh, made uh, uh, made a survey, and it was the result was that in only 15% of hearings, of court, uh, court hearings, uh, the special guardians were present at the hearings. And they were legal representatives of children, so the conclusion is uh, new violations of procedural rights will arise, definitely, uh, concerning uh, the Republic of Croatia. Uh, the examples uh, are here, so we have a case, C versus Croatia from 2020, and we have uh, fresh judicial practice of the constitutional courts uh, constitutional court that uh, that confirms that there are new violations of procedural rights of children uh, thank you for your uh, for your attention and i would uh, i would uh, want to show my gratitude to the organizers for inviting me thank you very much Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is my pleasure to present you findings of uh, the research uh, we have performed together with my colleagues uh, from Czech Republic. Uh, the, uh, our research was fun founded by the grant agency of the Czech Republic, so special thanks to the agency. And uh, definitely my special thanks goes to my colleagues, uh, co-researchers Katarzyna Cilečková and Monika Hrenkova, who are not present uh, with me, but uh, their work on uh, the topic was immense. Uh, so thank to them as well. Uh, well, um, I would like to present you uh, some findings. Oh yeah, uh, but before that, uh, let's very briefly summarize uh, international law um, that uh, sort of uh, stem, uh, well, uh, which children participation stems out of. Uh, it has been uh, mentioned uh, many times today, uh, Convention of the Rights of the Child, European Convention on the Exercise of uh, Rights of the Child, and also European Convention uh, for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms as well, definitely protects uh, children participation rights. Well, and uh, I definitely would also like you to see, hmm. well, it doesn't work properly, I, said, I, I think. It was working for you, I guess, but <laughs> not for me. Oh, yeah, now, great. So, uh, well, uh, there are actually um, three specific artists, articles addressing uh, the right of a child uh, for participation. Uh, first of them is Article uh, 867 of Czech Civil Code uh, that uh, clearly provides and imposes a uh, duty of the court to inform the child, uh, to uh, allow the child to form his own opinion and communicate the opinion to the court. 
And uh, what's uh, actually very important for our study is that uh, there is a presumption that a child over 12 years of age is, pre uh, is presumed to be able to receive the information and make uh, his or her own opinion on uh, the matter that the court is deciding. Uh, well... Secondly, uh, another substantive article of the Czech Civil Code is uh, 875 uh, that uh, provides and uh, imposes similar obligation to the parents of uh, the child. Again, the parents has to inform the child, uh, has to allow, uh, have to allow the child to form uh, his or her own opinion and communicate it and again to pay due attention to the opinion and take it into account when making a decision. Well, and speaking about the procedural law, um, aspects, uh, I have to point out to Article 100 of the Czech Civil Procedure Code uh, that uh, specifically states that the court shall ascertain the views of the minor child by questioning the child directly and only in exceptional cases the court may use other methods of uh, finding out the views of the child. But you will see later on that actual Czech practice uh, differs from uh, the, uh, the law to quite a degree. Well, before moving to, sorry, before moving to uh, findings of our research, uh, I will briefly summarize uh, some of the case law of Czech Constitutional Court, uh, because I would say that the Czech Constitutional Court is actually, uh, well, it has a leading role in strengthening rights, participatory rights of the child. Uh, there, is, uh, um, there are some cases uh, that are quite important uh, where the Constitutional Court found a violation of the rights of the child. Uh, for example, uh, if a seven years old boy uh, wasn't heard during the procedure on a surname change uh, by the court, well, it was found a violation of his, his rights. Uh, similarly, if a seven years old boy was not hurt uh, in a procedure uh, when uh, the court was uh, assessing which primary school should be chosen for him, again, it was a violation of uh, his uh, rights protected um, by the Constitution. Uh, well, let's move, hopefully... Yeah, to some of the basics, some of the, let's say, foundings of our research. We might say from the international law sources and also from the national law sources that actually uh, part of the participatory rights is part to be heard on the child. Moreover, the child uh, is not necessary, well, it is not necessary uh, to hear the child in every proceedings, but if the child wishes to be heard, well then, uh, if uh, he or she is not heard, well then the court has definitely duly uh, justified uh, such uh, lack of uh, hearing. Moreover, uh, if uh, the child is of age of 12 years of, of age, well then, uh, he or she should be heard directly. And moreover, uh, if uh, the child is heard indirectly, it should be done so only in justified cases. Uh, usually, um, due, to the, due to the age of uh, insufficient maturity of the child. Well, let's move to our research. We actually performed quantitative research uh, focusing on uh, parental responsibility cases uh, in uh, uh, eight regional courts around the Czech Republic. Uh, we have chosen court files uh, that were closed, meaning uh, decisions uh, became final between 2018 and 2019. Uh, and we have analyzed the court decision meaning the judgment and the content of the court file. 
uh, and our findings were put into the separate questionnaire for each child. Uh, based on that, we had almost 3,000 uh, 3, questionnaires, meaning children, uh, from eight regional courts. And, uh, well, our findings uh, were that uh, actually in a very limited number of cases, uh, the child under six years of age was hurt. Uh, in almost half of the cases, well, sorry, in mo more than half cases, if a child was over six years of age and till uh, 11, then uh, such child was also hurt. And uh, mostly in the last group of children over the 12 years, uh, almost 80% uh, of the children uh, were hurt during the court procedures. Um, actually, uh, what's quite important and interesting from our perspective is that the child, well, th that the court very often didn't have any information uh, whether the child wishes to express his or her opinion or not. Uh, in a majority of uh, the cases, it couldn't be ascertained whether the child wishes so. Uh, in around 35% of the cases, uh, it was clear that the child expressed uh, his or her wish not to be heard. Uh, directly by the court, and uh, in uh, the rest of the cases, uh, the child expressed um, uh, specifically uh, the wish to be heard. Um, well, to separate uh, actually the number of the children where there, uh, of which opinion was ascertained by the court, uh, you can see uh, the numbers uh, s uh, specifically separated to the three groups uh, in front of you. Uh, it is clear that uh, if the child is over six years of age, well then very often uh, he or she is heard by the court and uh, there is also a chart showing that uh, for the separate uh, years of age. So you can clearly see that uh, sort of a break point is around the age of eight uh, when uh, approximately 60% of the ch ch children were heard, well, and then uh, after the age of 12. Um, well, definitely the important question is uh, why the specific child was not heard uh, according to the courts. Uh, we have identified three uh, major areas of reasoning behind such an approach. Uh, first of all was a tender age, some uh, insufficient maturity mental limitations of the child. Uh, secondly, uh, that the proceedings involved uh, the issue, only uh, issue of increase or reduction of child maintenance uh, where the courts didn't think that uh, the um, wishes of the child are important uh, for ascertaining the uh, amount uh, of the maintenance that should be paid to uh, the other uh, parent usually. And uh, the last uh, group uh, of reasons um, focuses on the fact that parents announced an agreement to the court uh, on the exercise of uh, their rights and obligations in respect of the minor child. And, and oftenly, in such cases, uh, the courts didn't think important uh, to allow children to express their wishes if the parents uh, came to an agreement without the parents or without the intervention of the court. Uh, we have also identified some bad, very well, uh, definitely bad practice uh, where 
from a num where in a number of cases, uh, for example, parents didn't want to uh, the child to be heard, and and the court just followed their wishes and didn't ask the child whether the child wishes to be heard. Uh, second, uh, second bad practice as an example. Well, uh, very often, uh, as you will see in a moment, uh, the um, wishes of the child are found by the social workers, and uh, sometimes it happened that the child was not at home during the visit of a social worker, so uh, it was not heard. The social worker didn't come uh, again. Well, and uh, nevertheless, the court decided the case. Uh, moreover, mm, often a social worker also automatically assigned the same opinion uh, to the child that was asserted to his or her uh, older siblings. Well, and in a number of cases, it was a clear procedural mistake uh, since the child was over the age of 12. Uh, the file didn't show any limitations on the part of the child, and still uh, their opinion was not uh, asserted, their wishes were not uh, given to the court. Speaking about uh, the ways how uh, the wishes of the child are found by the Czech court, uh, well, in the majority of cases, it is indirectly. Uh, only in uh, 10% of cases, uh, the child was interviewed by the judge directly, um, and if the child was uh, heard indirectly, uh, in the majority of cases, it was a social worker, child protection authority or agency, uh, who was performing uh, the um, interview with the child, uh, and uh, other possibilities uh, were only uh, in a limited number of cases, like a mediator consoli counseling uh, center or some uh, appointed experts, or even child representatives, meaning, meaning uh, the parents of uh, the child. Uh, what's from our perspective, uh, sort of threatening is that uh, the practice of the courts varies significantly. Uh, you can see that there are courts uh, that uh, hurt uh, almost 90% of uh, children, uh, and there are courts that um, hurt only one third of uh, the children uh, they were handling their cases. So, um, due to limited amount of time I have, uh, I would like to switch to uh, conclusions. So, uh, from our perspective, uh, there are definitely still uh, limits uh, in the Czech court practice. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, in general, we, th we think that uh, Czech courts usually find out what are the wishes uh, of the child uh, if needed uh, and take those wishes into account. Uh, but there is a clear undesirable difference in approach among the courts uh, around the Czech Republic. Uh, sadly, uh, the children uh, are very often not heard directly uh, by the judge, but indirectly by the other persons and uh, without uh, possibility to make a choice, without informing them about such a possibility to speak directly to, to the judge. Well, and uh, moreover, the courts um, did not pay much attention from our perspective uh, to find out whether the child wishes uh, to be heard or not. And uh, they very often, I mean the courts, they very often didn't um, explain why they did not hear the child in the judgment or it's not clear uh, from uh, their uh, judgment. Well, uh, that's it. Uh, we, have, uh, we are planning to publish our findings uh, from our research in, um, in a definitely more um, you know, uh, detailed uh, way than I just did here. So uh, you're welcome to read it after that. 
Thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure speaking to you and being here.